Hello everyone, what's up? In this video I'm going to show you how I made these two realistic mod bases for Star Wars Legion from start to finish. So if you're looking for a step-by-step -step basing tutorial showing you how to create mod effects and puddles for your miniatures, this video is for you. Let's start, shall we? These are the two Star Wars Legion bases that I made. Since the resulting footage was of better quality with the larger one, I will stick with that one for the purposes of this video. The first step may surprise you, as I've never seen other wargamers use this before. This is 5mm thick foam board from Greenstaff World, which I find very useful for this sort of thing. What I'm going to do with it is add this to the base in order to create more volume, allowing me to make realistic puddles or anything else that requires high relief. Cutting this with just a hobby knife, no matter how sharp, takes a little bit of effort, but you don't need any specialized foam cutting tools. The only other thing you need to do is peel the foam, which has a layer of paper on both sides. With that done, I check the fit again with the base, taking note of all the imperfections that I would need to sand down. A liberal application of superglue and some pressure made sure that the foam would not be going anywhere. This material is really soft and you can actually make indentations in the foam with just finger pressure if you like. With the foam now secured to our bases, it was time for the most consuming part of all this, sanding. For this job, I use this flexible sanding stick in 240 grit by Albion Alloys, which I highly recommend. Its design makes sanding curves way easier than anything else I've used before, as it conforms to pretty much any shape and gives you really good control. Much better than just sandpaper, believe me. What I wanted to achieve here was both to get rid of any major imperfections and to give the sides of the foam a bevel, which was an extension of the one that the base itself has. Now doing this does create a lot of dust so I find that having a vacuum cleaner at hand is actually quite useful. After checking the fitment again with the tank, I got ready to make some holes in the foam where the puddles would go. For this I used a steel wire brush to carve into the foam. This allows all the edges to be jagged and irregular, whereas with a knife it would have looked far too clean, I think. As you might have guessed, my concept here was that this vehicle would be part of a tank column, churning up all the mud along the tank's twin engines. Kind of like a jet boat, I guess. Anyways, that aspect may be completely unrealistic, but rule of cool, people. With all the carving and sanding done, it was time to apply some texture to the base. As I explained in my recent mud and snow diorama video, this is a step which could be considered redundant as the mud paste itself has quite a lot of texture. In any case, this acrylic paste also seals everything nicely, which is a nice bonus. Check out the finish that I got in the end and decide for yourself if you want to bother with this extra step or just go directly to the mud paste. Anyways, as you can see, this paste is very easy to apply with just a brush, but having a small spatula at hand can also be useful. By the way, if you keep both your brush and your spatula slightly wet, applying the paste will be easier. When I was done, I inspected the base and was very happy with the results. Now I just had to dry for 24 hours before I started with the mud. Since I had kind of forgotten about the little flying stem, I checked that it would still fit nicely which thankfully it did. Now it was time to get everything nice and muddy. Like I said before, this acrylic mud paste from AK already has some texture to it and it looks super realistic. Applying it with an old flat brush was nice and relaxing. You basically just have to spread it evenly and make sure that you don't miss any spots. When I was done though, I went over it with my spatula to make sure that there weren't any big mounds of the stuff. And 
Then with some tap water and a brush, I blended the area surrounding the puddles and the flying stem. Doing this gives the area a softer finish in terms of the grit. Twenty-four hours later, the mud was completely dry and rock hard, and it was time to add some tonal variation. As you can see, my first step was to apply a light dry brush using Earth by Ammo. To be honest, in retrospect, I think I would recommend skipping this, as the effect was negligible in the end. But you know, up to you. After that, it was time for Ammo Fresh Mud and Enamel Wash, which I applied neat, but with the brush very slightly dampened and thinner. This I applied to all the puddles, that is to say, to the resist areas. Immediately after that I picked up Dark Mud, also from Ammo's Nature Effects range, and applied that liberally to all other areas of the base. Again, without any dilution, but making sure that I had shaken the bottle really well. Top tip, these enamels tend to separate with the pigment depositing at the bottom, so a stainless agitator ball may not be a bad idea. I have since added them to all my pots. After this I reapplied fresh mud to some areas which I either missed the first time or which I thought could use the additional contrast. Then it was time for the third and lightest mud enamel, loose ground. This one has a lot of texture, which the others don't so I thinned it around 30% as I was looking for a wash. This I applied as a highlight, only in some areas, trying to keep things random. The idea in general was to create visual interest by adding different notes, but without losing the realistic color which the mud paste already offered originally. Now you could do all of this with the airbrush and just different paints, but to be honest, with the time involved in cleaning up the airbrush and changing colors and so on, I think this might have been faster in the end. In any case, a few hours later, the enamels were dry, and as you can see, this step had made a huge difference to the overall finish. However, it was all matte and dry looking, so we had to change that. If you're enjoying this video, guys, consider joining the Race for Terra YouTube membership, which starts at only 1 euro a month. If you join the mid or top tiers, you will have access to ad free, exclusive members only videos among other things. Check out the other perks. Since the AK muddy ground paste dries completely matte, which I didn't know before, I have resorted to one of my favorite enamel products, Wet Effects by Ammo. This is a transparent, pretty dense enamel, which can be thinned and mixed with other enamels to create various effects. In this case, however, I just applied it neat with a brush as all I wanted was to make the previous layers shiny. I knew this would transform the entire base and make it look much more realistic. It took a while since I didn't have any brushes larger than that at hand, but needless to say it was a relaxing task. And finally it was time for the star of the show, the puddles. For this I used Green Stuff World's UV resin, which I've been using for years. Tinting this resin is really easy, just add a drop of acrylic paint and mix really well. To apply the resin, the best thing is to pour it, very gently, into a hole or recess. Not to try and paint it, let's say. Since I needed to be quite precise, I just used some toothpicks, which are also really handy to move the resin around, making sure that it fills the entire area. While you watch me apply the rest of the resin, let me tell you a tale of woe. <laughs> Did you notice that the bottom of the puddles looked different to the rest of the base? The reason for that is that this was in fact my second resin application. Yes, you heard correctly. Prior to this, I had poured resin from an older bottle, which turns out was two years old. Now that resin was very, very thick and hard to apply and it was impossible to get rid of the usual bubbles that you always get with this. Long story short, I made sure that it was rock solid and then I completely removed it. So the moral of the story is twofold. First of all, I think that this resin has a very short shelf life. 
My second bottle, the one that you've actually seen me use, was one year old, and it was already far thicker than it should be, in fact. So maybe something like six months would be safer. Oh, and secondly, if for whichever reason you use this resin and you're unhappy with the results, for example, you didn't get the color that you like, there is a pretty good chance that you'll be able to remove it and start again. With this done, it was just a matter of using my UV torch to harden the resin, which I did off camera, and then I left the bases on a windowsill for 24 hours just to make sure, you know, sunlight, even in northern Germany. <laughs> all in all, this was a really fun project, a change of pace for me, which I needed, and it also inspired me to add some additional weathering effects to these two Star Wars Legion vehicles. Now they both look better and they have bases, so they have taken pride of place on my display shelf. I hope that you've enjoyed this little video. I'm thinking of doing an entire series of videos on basing miniatures, so let me know in the comments what would be of interest to you in this context. Before I let you go, I would like to once again thank all my YouTube members. Your kind and generous support means a lot to me and it really helps me keep making content, both in terms of motivation and helping me with all the consumables that I go through for making the videos. You won't believe how fast I go through Tamiya thinner, for one. That's all from me for now, folks. But remember, keep it up and weather it out.